Once upon a time, a very long time ago, there lay far off in the east a beautiful city of white marble. The people of the city were farmers and artisans and merchants, and they had a king who ruled them well and wisely. And so the city grew, and it became prosperous. But there is this about such wealth. Although it draws the admiration of many, it also excites the envy and the greed of others. And it so happened that word of this rich city came to the ears of a fierce dragon, and it resolved in its wicked heart to take this treasure for itself. The dragon swooped down from the hills, attacking the outlying farms, eating the animals and scorching the fair fields with its rancid breath. The people fled and told their king that a monster had come upon them. So the king donned his armour summoned all his soldiers, and they marched out and fought the dragon. But it was too strong for them, and it defeated and overcame them, and drove them back into their city. And so, to save his people, the king made a terrible pact with the monster. In return for peace between them, he agreed to give the dragon two sheep for its food every single day. It was a burden to the people of the city, but for a time it worked. But soon, as is the way of these things, the dragon began to ask for not two sheep, but three. And then not three, but four. Then it wanted a cow and a sheep, then a cow and a pig, and then a cow and two pigs, and soon there was not a single sheep or cow or pig to be found anywhere in the city. And so, to sate the ravenous hunger of the dragon, the people began to choose their own sons and daughters by lot for it to feast upon. And the once prosperous city became an unhappy, desolate place, full of weeping and sorrow. Then one day the lot fell upon the king's own beautiful daughter. And when he learned of this, the king lamented and said, This may not be, for you are my heir and my life, and I love you more than anything on this earth. But the princess said, those that have gone before me had fathers and mothers, and husbands and wives, and sons and daughters that love them. How can I do less than they? And so, on the appointed day, they dressed her in the white clothes of mourning, and took her out to the place where the terrible pact had been sealed. They bound her by a stake, surrounded by the bleached bones of those who had gone before her, and weeping, went back into the city, leaving her to her fate. And the princess summoned what courage she could, and waited for the flap of the leathery wings that would mean the coming of the dragon, and her own death. But instead she heard the clop-clop of hoofbeats, and over the hill came a great white stallion, its harness jingling as it moved, and sat upon the stallion was a young, handsome knight called George. And the princess looked upon him and in that instant loved him, and he looked upon her, and loved her too. He unbowed her from the tree of shame, and asked why it was that she was so held in this terrible place. She told him the story of the dragon, and the pact her people had been forced to make with it. And when he heard this tale, George's face darkened, and he said, This is an evil custom, and it must be done away with. And the princess placed her fingers to his mouth, and said, That you must not say. For I have seen many brave champions fight the dragon, and all have failed and been slain, and I would not have happened to you, my love. But George said, How could I be worthy of your love, and be a true knight before God and man, if I did not attempt this challenge? So he rebound her to the stake, in such a way that it seemed she was held, but actually could escape at any time, and then he armed himself with sword and shield, and lay hidden, waiting for the dragon. He did not have to wait long, for soon he heard the flap of leathery wings, and the great form of the dragon alighted. By this time it was enormous. Great slabs of muscle rippled beneath thick scales as hard as steel plate. Its forked tongue flickered between sharp teeth, a hand span long. Razor-sharp claws like daggers jutted from its paws, and its breath was as poison. Where it moved, plants withered and died and George's heart quailed as he looked upon it. But then he looked upon the princess, and considered his vows, and thought on the injustices her people had endured, 
and he grew valiant and stepped from his hiding place, brandishing his sword, and confronted the dragon. The dragon looked upon George and laughed and mocked him. I fear no blade wielded by mortal man. Many have faced me, and all have died. Soon you will join them, foolish man. That may be, replied George. That may be. But if God gives me strength and courage, I shall vanquish you. At this the dragon roared and lashed out a mighty blow. But George ducked, and the sharp claws merely sliced apart the plume on his helmet. George straightened and stabbed with his sword, but the thick scales easily turned the point. The dragon roared again and swiped with his other paw. George blocked the blow with his stout shield, although the sharp talons gouged great rents in the wood. George swung his sword in reply, but only chipped off a small piece of scale. And so it went on. They fought back and forth, hour upon hour, neither able to gain advantage, until the sun had crossed the sky and they were weary from their exertions. But at long last the dragon gave one mighty blow, and George's good shield shattered into a thousand pieces, and the brave knight fell stunned to his knees. And the dragon roared in triumph and swung with its other paw. The cruel talons bit home, and George fell lifeless to the ground. The dragon triumphed in its victory, but as he was distracted, the princess fashioned what poor weapon she could, a noose made from her own girdle, and slipped it over the dragon's neck. And to her surprise the monster staggered, and its strength departed from it, and it fell to the ground, casting puzzled eyes upon her. And then a doctor came, and seeing her surprise said, The dragon is a creature of hate and lust, and as long as you have love and chastity, the emblem of which you bind it with now, then it will have no power over you. And then the doctor went over to George's body, and placed his hand upon his brow, and he opened his bag and took out a pill, and placed it upon George's tongue, and shut his mouth, and his chest rose and fell, his eyes opened, and he sat up. And the doctor smiled, and bowed, and went on his way. George joined the princess, and they embraced, and then led the dragon by the leash back to the city. And on the battlements a guard saw them, and cried out, We are undone! The monster has despised our sacrifice, and comes now to destroy us. But George said, No, no, for by the power of love and faith we have defeated this monster, and it will trouble you no more. And then in the sight of the entire city, he took out his sword and smote the dragon with a blow harder than ever given before, and its scales were rent asunder, its black blood came out, and it died. And they built a great pyre, and burned the body until not a morsel of it was left. And the king of the city was so impressed that he vowed on that day to be baptised, and all his people vowed with him. And George and the princess were married, and in the fullness of time came to be the new king and queen of that city, and it grew and prospered as never before.